Martha Randolph was the eldest daughter of Thomas and Martha Jefferson's six children. She was very close to her father and followed him around the world throughout the course of his political career. Her unique life circumstances in many ways challenged the conventions surrounding women of Virginia's most elite social classes. Historians argue that she was among the most well-educated women in the state, but in her own letters, she at times felt that this led to her being ill-prepared for her role as a mother and plantation mistress. This is Mountaintop History, a podcast dedicated to telling the story of Monticello and all who lived and labored at this plantation. I'm Kyle Chilton, and today we're focusing on Martha Randolph and the role of education in the lives of Virginia's gentry class women. To understand this topic more, I spoke with Laura Michael Balderson of the Thomas Jefferson Foundation in a bedroom that Martha Randolph called her own during her time at Monticello. For women of the gentry class, so these are women who are going to have access to a fair bit of wealth over the course of their lives. Most of these women in the United States are going to be uh, educated at home. It's going to be largely their mothers who are teaching them. They're going to learn reading and writing. They're going to learn arithmetic and things like that. Um, they're going to learn skills that make them basically uh, ornaments to the home and are sort of trying to make them attractive uh, options as marriage partners. So they're going to learn music, dancing, drawing, or painting. They will learn sewing skills, but it's largely focused on, again, decorative sewing skills, samplers and embroidery pieces and things like that. And all of this makes them lovely young women, right? And uh, ideally that's gonna be paired with a substantial dowry and they are going to be very attractive uh, during the social season here in Virginia that's largely gonna be taking place in Richmond. Once married, however, many of these young women find that they have really been poorly prepared for what awaits them as a plantation mistress. Because in truth, a plantation mistress is in charge of the household in very practical ways. So that's meal planning, that's keeping track of household accounts for clothing, for food, for household goods in many cases. The expectation is that a plantation mistress will keep things running smoothly, looking good, keeping really the uh, social expectations of the gentry class. And in many cases, this is uh, much more hands-on work than these women have been trained for. So we have letters where young married women move to uh, the plantation of their new husbands, suddenly find themselves in charge of making mattresses for the household, making sure that the appropriate number of hogs are slaughtered every December so that the family will have hams for the year. Um, in many cases, these women are in charge of making clothing for their own families, uh, as well as the enslaved communities on those plantations. And so many, many women find that their roles that they have been prepared for is really the only upfront part of their role as a plantation mistress. And there's all sorts of behind the scenes work where they're going to quite literally take the hoop off from under their skirt, roll up their <laughs> sleeves, uh, and, and, you know, get in that pickling brine and make sure that, that the food is being cured correctly so their family has something to eat all year. These were the realities for women of the gentry class. And Martha Randolph's life story, in particular, diverged from and aligned with these realities in interesting ways. Yeah, so Martha Randolph is just 10 years old when her mother dies, and that's really important because uh, Monticello Plantation is fairly isolated and there's not another woman to step in and teach her all of these different skills. As a young woman, she is really close to her father and he has high educational expectations. Thomas Jefferson famous for uh, his devotion to education, but sometimes that overtakes his devotion as a father, right? So we have, for example, a letter that he writes her um, just about a year after her mother has passed away. He is away on business and he writes a letter describing what she should study each day. And the schedule that he gives her goes from eight in the morning until five o'clock in the evening. My goodness. And includes 
no breaks, no periods for eating, uh, does not even include a time for her to get dressed. It is all music and French and dancing and writing, all of these accomplishments, right? And he, at, in other times, he sends letters to his daughters, um, Martha and her younger sister, Mariah, where he says quite explicitly, if you want me to love you more, you will apply yourself to your studies. There is absolutely a linkage between how happy he will be with them and how much he will love them. This changes a little bit when they go to France. Um, so Martha accompanies her father to Paris in 1784, and she attends there a school for young ladies, the Abbe Royal du Pantemont, which is really removed. It's a boarding school. Uh, she doesn't see her father that often, um, but she's really immersed in this community of women there. And, and this is an intellectual and artistic and spiritual education that she really takes to. And, and I think it's not at all surprising um, given the, the way that she grew up, uh, in many cases isolated and, and with this close um, but sometimes de demanding father figure, right? So she thinks about staying at this uh, abbey and taking, taking um, vows and becoming a Catholic nun. And Jefferson feels that she's not seen enough of the world to make that decision. He also is somewhat opposed to Catholicism as a, as a religious practice. Um, so he unenrolls her from that school, shows her some of fine society in Paris. And so she has a sort of coming out uh, as a young woman, attends some balls and things like that. And then they come back to Virginia and she's married very quickly uh, to uh, a man, Thomas Mann Randolph Jr., who is set to inherit and become very wealthy. Um, that doesn't end up happening. And she finds herself as a Virginia plantation mistress with an education that is suited for uh, really an urban European lifestyle. She does not necessarily feel herself ready for these tasks, like she's been well suited for them. It is challenging in many ways for her to accomplish these tasks. We know, however, that Martha Randolph in many ways impressed her father and his guests with her abilities as a plantation mistress. And her life story marks a unique set of circumstances that reflect the value and role of education to women of the gentry class and the different forms this education could and would take. This has been another episode of Mountaintop History, a collaboration podcast between WTJU and the Thomas Jefferson Foundation. This episode of Mountaintop History was made possible in part by a major grant from the National Endowment for the Humanities. Join us for new episodes every two weeks on Apple and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and the Virginia Audio Collective. To learn more about Monticello or to plan your next trip, visit us online at monticello.org. <laughs>